Hello Indie Game Fan, there was an embarrassment of riches in September when it came to games, so I have a special video on games from bigger developers and genres that are not usually my favourite, but I do have to acknowledge, beginning with Rogue Genesia, a well-received Bullet Heaven roguelite that does things just different enough for it to be of interest, such as having distinct levels instead. If you're wondering why everyone is attempting to clone vampire survivors, look no further than the success of this. Zero Cleaners is a sequel to Zero Cleaner, singular from 2017, where you're cleaning up crime scenes before the police get there, coming to us from a rather large Polish team and has the support of publisher 505 Games. They changed up the art style and added more playable characters which is nice, while retaining the core concept that made the original great, where stealth games are pretty rare these days so it's of interest and does seem to have gone under the radar. A story of loyalty, betrayal, and crime. Lots of crime. The past they share is all that stands in the way of redemption. If you remember the 90s differently, their dirty work is the reason why. What you're about to witness is top secret information of the Foundation. Since this is my first real SCP project, you got any advice for me? It is critical that we find that black box. There are some insanely popular franchises in games that I have a shallow understanding of, and such is the case with SCP, the open source shared universe that can be used under the Creative Commons license, leading to games like SCP Secret Files, with plenty of unnatural, spooky and scary parts in this world. This game is a horror anthology where you're experiencing different cases, and while it was a September release, is perfect for October as well. Carter is a death row inmate. D-503 heard the call. SCP-239 is now a ticking time bomb. She could go off at any moment. When you feel scared, just close your eyes. What the hell is that? Where is the black box? Looks like something bad happened here. I'm Carl Stop. This is way beyond anything I imagined. If you encounter an anomaly, run. Because that's the only thing you can do. Welcome to the Foundation, rookies. London, 1899. The world has never seen a greater city. The greatest architecture. The greatest technology. The greatest entertainment. And of course, the greatest assortment of mindless, ruthless killers. A recent development. But hope prevails. I love the world of Circus Electrique, a steampunk management RPG where you're running a circus, battling Londoners who mysteriously turn into vicious killers with your troop of performers, while having to manage the day-to-day -day operations and to ensure that the show must go on. Your characters from strongmen to clowns and fire blowers are wonderful, with a rather interesting card-based management system as well, again coming to us from a rather large Hungarian studio which makes them not so indie. Of the third-person action-adventure games released this year, Solstice is up there with the best, being a grim dark moody title with fantastic action. You play as a pair of sisters, bonded together to form something known as a chimera, with the power to fight off invading monsters known as reefs. It does have almost character action game style combat with powerful combos, but does add in the now expected elements like parrying enemy attacks, with colour coding to indicate enemy weaknesses where you need to switch between different forms. This comes to us from an Italian developer whose parent company had a revenue of 1.48 billion euros, so it's no small fish by any means, but it's a decent action title to check out.
I did mention the 1.0 release of Foxhole as well, a different kind of MMO where you play as a single soldier in a massive war against other players, where battles can take weeks to resolve and everything from logistics and reconnaissance is done by the players themselves. It is vaguely based on World War II in terms of the level of technology, but it's a fictional alternate history timeline where those wars never ended and humanity has been at war for over a hundred years. We did see a nice spike in player base since the launch out of early access, so get in while it's hot. Similarly, Izonzo is a World War I shooter but in first person, taking the fight to the Italian front, where I believe developer and publisher Blackmail Games and M2H combined have a staff of about 30 people, which is very impressive considering that they are holding their ground against the EAs and Activisions of the world. In many ways, this was expected since their earlier games, Budan and Tenenberg, were extremely well received, with this being the most refined versions of those games so far, showcasing the strength of smaller teams and developers. One of the more impressive releases of the month is Terra Invicta, which is about as indie as can be since a bunch of this team did work on the acclaimed Long War mod for XCOM Enemy Unknown, so you know their development chops are there in the strategy space. What is science, if not a consensus of trial and error? This game has you leading a faction of humanity in the wake of an alien invasion, eventually becoming technologically advanced enough to take to the stars with tactical combat in space. The war against the aliens can't be won on Earth alone. It seems very strategically deep with more to come in early access, so if you love your grand strategy titles, dig into this one. It warms my heart to see the success of Return to Monkey Island, one that is technically from a small indie developer headed up by Ron Gilbert, who was one of the original minds behind the LucasArts classic The Secret of Monkey Island. 32 years after the release of that, this sequel revisits protagonist Guybrush a Threat Poet, telling more or less a standalone pirate story with refinement to the point and click genre as well, and was a monumental task with the involvement of Devolver and Lucasfilm games, but maybe it might reignite interest in this genre. My goodness, if you love first-person shooters, I'm sure that you'll be interested in Metal Hell Singer due to the combination of fun weapons, great music and awesome mechanics where you're shooting, reloading and dodging on the beat with polished modern graphics where it is essentially Metal Rhythm Doom Eternal so if that sounds good, pick this up right away with more upcoming shooters of interest here. <laughs> 